Well, hey, good morning, folks. I'm meteorologist T.J. Shuck in the WHAS 11 First Alert Storm Team Weather Center on this Thursday. It's about 5 after 8 a.m. And, of course, the uh, much-advertised uh, winter storm is upon us, and it's really about uh, a location. It's like buying a house, location, location, lo location. It has been a tale of two states, literally, uh, all morning long. Uh, much of Kentucky, with the exception of a few of our counties, uh, say down toward Meade County, Hardin County, Breckenridge County, they have gotten at or below the freezing mark, but literally that freezing line has been just off to the north and west of Metro Louisville, literally for about the last three or four hours. So it's one of those cases where it's just a matter of time before that freezing line gets through here and the rain, which of course here in Louisville has not caused any problems at all with the morning commute. It's just a chilly rain and we don't have any slick roadways that will move through. Temperatures will drop below the freezing mark and that's when we'll start to get some of that ice accretion. Interestingly enough, all morning long, we've been getting reports to our north of ice in Salem and Washington County, Indiana, some icing up in Seymour. Uh, we had our new reporter of uh, Fort Roberts up there uh, along the interstate, and they had some ice accretion up in Jackson County. Uh, also over in the Madison Hanover area, back toward Jasper in Dubois County as well. So there are spots throughout southern Indiana that have been getting freezing rain and they are going to continue to as we go through the morning. This will be a day-long process, uh, but as you can see here in the metro, we've got some fairly moderate rain. Uh, some of this may be a little bit of bright banding on the radar, which is the beam is aloft, so it hits some of those ice crystals which have a little higher reflectivity aloft, and it makes it appear like it's raining heavily, more heavily than it is, but it, we're still catching it at a pretty good clip. So if you haven't left for work yet, shouldn't be as much traffic on the roadways. I know schools are closed, a lot of businesses are, a lot of people working from home today. So that should help as we finish up the rush hour here within the next hour or so. But you see just how close that pink and purple is up toward the knobs and uh, Floyd County back into Harrison County uh, and and just again southern Indiana I've showed this a number of times during the course of the morning and I'll put this up uh, full briefly the pink line that you see there is actually the 32 degree line the freezing line this is uh, on a two-hour loop but really if I took it back probably four or five hours, notice how that pink line just will not drop through Louisville Metro. It, you know, it, it sunk down through Breckenridge County, uh, Meade County, even snuck over toward Elizabethtown a little bit earlier. But right now, the above average temperatures are winning out, and essentially the Ohio River is almost a demarcation line for a lot of the area. Again, you go back toward Jasper, Paoli, Bedford, Seymour, Salem, North Vernon, Scottsburg, Austin, all those areas in southern Indiana continue uh, to see this freezing rain event, and we are just dealing with regular chilly rain. But that is going to change again as we go through the remainder of the morning. Thought it might be 7, 8 o'clock. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more so toward the late morning uh, before that, that does occur. But the bottom line is it's already uh, being impactful and disruptive, and it will continue to do so as we go through the remainder of the day. This is a great illustration of what's happening with temperatures. Notice Ali International is at 35. Temperatures actually come up a degree over the last, say, three or four hours, we've been right at 34. Frankfurt's at 35. 34 in Shepherdsville. 
But look across the river. Madison, Austin, Corden at 32. Jasper at 32 as well. And then you get up to Bedford all the way down to 27. And I do think that area up there along the U.S. 50 corridor, Lawrence, Jackson, Jennings County, will um, probably get into sleet and snow a bit more than we will here and obviously earlier in the afternoon. And I'll show you that on future casts coming up here in just a second. So the warnings have not changed as of 7 a.m. a little over an hour ago. Ice storm warning for all the counties uh, in purple, which is the majority of our viewing area. So let's kind of break it down section or region by region. So speaking of that area, they're in a winter storm warning. Lawrence, Jackson, Jennings County, US 50 from Bedford to Seymour or Brownstown, Seymour over to North Vernon. You're looking at some light icing that has already occurred. Uh, but there will be more in the way of accumulating sleet and especially snow later this afternoon into the evening hours and during the overnight as well. I'm looking at some of the comments uh, from folks that are chiming in. I know we've got a uh, good many people on, which uh, we greatly appreciate uh, seeing that there, uh, let's see, what else, uh, that there was some ice up in Henryville, I believe. I'm just trying to see all the comments here. Uh, as many of them as I as many of them as I can. So yeah, we we've definitely been getting reports all throughout southern Indiana of some icing again on the trees, the power lines, the elevated objects and surfaces. So a little bit farther south into southern Indiana, say north of Louisville, still in that range of a quarter to a half inch of ice. You've already gotten a little bit of that, and then the changeover will occur a little later but could easily lay an inch, two, maybe even three of a sleet-snow combination later on. Then farther south, and this has always kind of been the bullseye, even yesterday, uh, our thinking really has not changed very much, between Louisville and Elizabethtown, when that freezing line eventually works through here, that's probably going to be the area that's going to ha have the higher end ice accretion, meaning a half inch, some locations even more than that. Generally speaking, when you get above the half inch ice accumulation, and if you have any kind of wind at all, which we've got some breezy north to northeast winds that I think this afternoon will be occasionally 20, 25 miles per hour, that's when you can begin to run into it be becoming more problematic and more issues relative to, you know, any kind of power outages or, or, or tree damage or that kind of thing. And so hopefully, you know, that won't happen. Hopefully the longer that that freezing line holds off, the less icing we will get. And there'll, there'll be some light sleet and snow, and I'll show you uh, that again here on future cast in just a second so you can see the model data that deeper red is basically between louisville and e-town and bardstown and that's where we'll see the the, the heaviest icing what you've got up toward uh, our northern counties in southern indiana you may begin to see the transition if you haven't already uh, as, as as far as um as, as far as switching over to sleet and snow, because I know farther north up toward Indianapolis, you know, it has been primarily snow. Again, there is a snow slash sleet element to this from an accumulating standpoint, and that'll be later tonight into tomorrow morning. So the scenario would be you lay down a little bit of ice and then you put down a coating of snow on it, maybe even upwards of an inch here in the metro area and a little more up top in southern Indiana, and that's not going to make the morning commute tomorrow very much fun at all. It's not been bad, of course, here in Louisville into southern Indiana. I know there have been some slick spots on the roadways, especially the side roads, um, and that's going to continue to be the case. Um, you know, if um, and I'm seeing that uh, from Michelle McClure that her husband works downtown off West Chestnut, not far from where our station is, not bad at all. Um, 
And since her mom lives up in Peoria and Prince Lick there in Orange County, and it's getting bad already. So that that's the point. There's a, a distinct difference between Louisville Metro and our Kentucky counties and what's going on in southern Indiana as of 8.15 a.m. on Thursday morning, if you happen to be watching this back on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. And we will be doing cut-ins every half hour. Um, I've got another one coming up uh, at about 8.27 here in about 10 minutes, so I'll, I'll get through this. Uh, so we're going to continue to update you as the situation will evolve and change literally hour by hour as we go through the remainder of the day. But keep that in mind for tomorrow morning, especially those side uh, roads and secondary streets that are untreated. Hopefully the main roads will be in good shape. I know road crews are going to work hard all day, all night to get them in good shape. And uh, hopefully that will be the case. Now here's our future cast. Here within the hour, it may be a little bit ahead of the game, but it's trying to bring that colder air farther south. You notice how temperatures along the river, either side, upper 20s, low 30s, below freezing. That's when we're going to see the bulk of our freezing rain and icing event, especially here in Louisville. That'll be later morning into the early and mid part of the afternoon. Notice by mid-afternoon, Jasper Paoli, Again, per our in-house data here, you're switching over to sleet and snow. May get a little bit of a break this evening, and then I think we're going to have that little swath of snow work here during the overnight. Again, lay a coating or an inch or so on top of, you know, what ice has accumulated. <clears throat> Excuse me, farther south, uh, say down toward Campbellsville, Columbia, uh, Greensburg, you're going to have less in the way of icing and probably very little snow, if at all. Uh, it's more so going to be southern Indiana and then obviously between Louisville and the parkways. By tomorrow afternoon, temperatures only in the mid, upper 20s. We start to clear out from north to south. So, obviously looking at the icing part of it, already seeing that. Trees, power lines, elevated objects. First, in southern Indiana, uh, the bridges and the overpasses become slick and hazardous first. And then later on, when we add that sleet element and snow element to it, especially after dark, overnight, that'll put that bit of a, a coating of snow uh, on the roadways here. So, as of 818, here is our UPS Jobs KY Camera Network. This is our University of Louisville online campus cam. Looking at the clock tower and the campus, and that is facing toward Kentucky Kingdom and looking toward Ali International, where, again, we were at 35 at 8 a.m. and 34 at Bowman Field. And notice how the winds, north-northeast at about 12. They're going to be a little gusty at times, 20, 25. So you put some ice on some of the power lines and the trees, and the wind whips up a little bit. If you get up to that higher end, half inch or more, then you can run into some problems. But hopefully we will, it's not a hard and fast threshold, it's just in general. But you see here, look at the difference in temperatures. Mitchell in Lawrence County, 28, 32 in Scottsburg, 28 in Seymour. Then south of the river, other than Brandenburg and LaGrange, everybody else is at or above freezing. So it's just plain old rain, but there's plenty of moisture. It's going to continue to come in. Um, and I do appreciate uh, all the comments. And I know there are some questions, you know, here, there, and the other, and trying to walk and chew gum here at the same time in a short window before this next cut in. But uh, I know we'll be doing some additional Facebook Lives as the day wears on. I'm sure Alden will. Ben will be back on a little bit later on this afternoon as we're in the heart of the event. So here's the seven day forecast. I'll put this up full so you can see it. You know, today is our disruptive and impactful day that will carry over into tomorrow morning with some snow showers and the morning commute will be probably a little bit dicey. We start to clear out later on in the afternoon and uh, we clear out and with the ice and some snow expected to be on the ground, I think we're talking single digit lows and even some spots outside the metro could even be you know below that seven above 
Uh, the good news for the weekend, yes, even though it's chilly, it will be dry. I don't think we'll get above freezing until sometime Sunday. There's a weak front on Monday that's going to cruise through here and may give us a few flurries uh, here and there. And then we do jump back up into the 40s on Tuesday and Wednesday, which will be welcome news. So that's kind of it in a nutshell in about a 10, 12-minute period. Again, we're going to have cut-ins, top, bottom of the hour, all day long. Of course, we'll be on at noon, and uh, we'll continue to update you, obviously, on air, and you can get all your online stuff, whas11.com. Download our app, WHAS, on your smartphone. Get the push alerts. Those will alert you to some changing conditions as well, and you can basically stay tuned into this as we go through the remainder of the day. But again, I appreciate everybody joining me. Wanted to give you a quick quick update while well, I had a little window here, but uh, I'll do a cut-in 8.30. We'll be doing cut-ins during Great Day Live between 9 and 10, and then we'll do those all the way up uh, until we do our full hour at noon, and then we'll have cut-ins all afternoon. And uh, of course, through our newscast, full newscast and stay on top of this as we go through the day. So uh, everybody stay home if you don't have to go out, uh, hunker down, watch a good movie, have some hot chocolate, chill out, don't have to be in out in it if you don't have to and everybody stay safe and we will talk to you soon and stay with us right here on WHAS.